using your small or my medium size. Hi! Why don't you walk over to the flowers? It's very pretty over there, huh? Hi, dog. Say hi, to Grandma and Grandpa. What? Hi, Grandma, hi, grandma and Grandpa. grandpa. Sorry, you're not here.
young woman was walking toward them. And as the young woman came up close to them and passed them, Justice Holmes turned his head to watch. Remember, he's 90. <laughs> and he said to the young man beside him, Gee, if I could only be 70 again. <laughs>
and that will all have many happy occasions uh, to come. Mazel tov. because mother is already in the picture. Here's Uncle Teddy, Bobby and Zadie, and it says Halpern Tobacco. I think the front has been changed a little. So yes. what year is this? Was this before you went to Europe? Was this in 1927, 28? When did you go to Europe? 29. And I'm assuming you took the picture. Must have, yes. It's just extraordinary. You know, Mark said he'd never seen Uncle Teddy this young. I have a picture of Ted in his ROTC uniform I'm going to send Mark. Yeah. Who's this? Look how gorgeous your father-in-law is. Come here. Bobby and say, well, put it in the kitchen, honey. Choices. Just put it in the kitchen, Tess. You don't have to eat it, honey. In my house, there's a rule. You don't have to eat it. What? You don't okay. have to eat it, so Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I've got to do one. The only rule in this house is you have to close the door with the end. You don't have to step. You can do another one, darling. Can you add any commentary to that more? Can you add any commentary to that picture, or it just speaks for itself? It speaks for itself. I, uh, I imagine since Edith is there, well, I don't know. That's not, not certain. Ted, my father, and Bobby. This is undated. Is that right? And it's pretty hard to date. I didn't even count. I just like this. Uh, now, what, what street was that store on? Meridian, Meridian Street. Street. Meridian Street. 57 Meridian Street, yeah. Uh, and you can't see the store from here, see? But uh, I would guess this is a later picture than the other one. Uh, because it wasn't Halpern's tobacco until they remodeled the store. Okay. And the remodeling came, uh, uh, let's say, in the, well, in the 20s, yeah, they remodeled in the 20s. It's hard. It's too bad. There's no date on these things here. What? Uh, what? Can we tell by the costume or not? Maybe we could tell by the costume, by the kind of hat that Edith is wearing, or the length of the skirts. Huh? What was the uh, store be before it was remodeled? What? What was it? Well, before that, it would be. Uh, it began as something that would be fruit, confectionery, and tobacco. Confectionery meaning candy and ice cream. And fruit. That's originally the store that my father bought. Then he gradually got rid of things. And instead of expanding, 
in he contracted. the old country in Russia <laughs> when they didn't have vitamins and cod liver oil. That was and, uh, so it became, then when, when they, at a certain point, they remodeled the storefront. Uh, well, modernize it, you might say. And at that time, there was no fruit anymore. I don't remember whether there was ice cream, probably ice cream remained for some time, but confectionery and tobacco were the, were the big things. Now, how long, how long did they stay in that, how long did they have that store? They got it in 1910. And I think they stayed there till about 1940, well, roughly, I believe, some 30 years. Now, why did they, why did they sell it? Well, because they were unable, physically unable to maintain it. Especially my father was not in good shape. Uh, he had the beginnings of what we now call Alzheimer's disease. And while in this case it was a very slow process, but he was not really up to handling the store anymore. But at least he knew it, I understand. He was, uh, he, he was very much conscious of his limitations. And my mother, of course, went on working. You know, later she went working and she was, uh, Actually, after he sold the store, the war began, and he got a job in a warehouse, a government warehouse or something, doing something, you know. So he's on the payroll until the end of the war. <laughs> Amazing, huh? What did uh, Bubby do for work? She worked in a bakery uh, behind the counter, selling, uh, selling uh, bread and pastries and stuff. Uh, right near where they lived, which was Carmel Avenue and Harvard. Is that right? That sounds you right. Visualize, visualize the place there. Yeah. Sure. They lived on Carmel Avenue, and uh, a few blocks from Harvard, and she got a job waiting behind the counter for quite a number of years. Now, did they... Pardon me? When they had the store, were they then no longer living in East Boston, or I beg your pardon. when they were, when they still had the store? No, no. Did, I mean, when they sold the store, they but, moved out of East Boston. Oh, but they lived in East Boston until they sold the store. Until they sold the store, yeah. Yeah. And they moved out of East Boston. They moved to this uh, apartment they had in Commonwealth Avenue, which was the last place I think they had. Well, no, I remember visiting Bubby and Zadie on Blue Hill Avenue right near Franklin Park. They had an apartment there. Well, that was... That was after you had left Boston. Probably after I had left, but I didn't know that that's a, that happened, really. Yeah, they had an apartment on Blue Hill Avenue, uh, you know, right near the zoo. Really? And that's the first apartment, that's the only apartment I remember there being in. I don't remember that. I think, you see, I came to visit them, uh, let's say during the war. Yeah. I packed them and we were on Commonwealth Avenue, not Blue Hill Avenue. Right. So they moved to Blue Hill Avenue after the war, is that it? I imagine so. Yeah, do you remember when when it was that you were at Blue Hill Avenue? I'll show you something. Well, from my earliest childhood memories of them are in Blue Hill Avenue, and that's probably... Well, I would have been in the mid 1950s. So this was after the Commonwealth Avenue. Yes. They moved to Blue Hill Avenue. Oh, I begin to remember they did. I never, I never visited them at Blue Hill Avenue. As 
I recall. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. I should have. I, I left Boston in 53. They hadn't moved me yet in 53. It was after 53. That was about the... I'm sure it was after 53. Yeah. Of course, Blue Hill Avenue was somewhat convenient to Milton, you know, where I grew up. That's right. So that was, it was convenient for my father and mother. Right. That's right. In fact, I used to... Uh, I, I, I guess it means my mother stopped working in the bakery. Yeah. Because she couldn't go from Blue Hill Avenue to this place here. No. In fact, I remember, you know, I used to be able to bicycle from my house in Milton to visit them. Is that so? Yeah. You're that close. Well, it was probably about four or five miles, but it was an easy yeah. bicycle ride. Yeah. yeah. And the level ground. Yes. Yeah, they lived in a brownstone, I think. Pardon me? They lived in a brownstone. Yeah. That's the story. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. And here's some pictures, yeah. though. Well, this was, of course, after I left Boston. After I left Boston, I never, I never knew the place. Now, where did you live in Boston uh, prior to leaving? We lived not far from uh, the bakery. Hello there. We lived on a street called Kelton Street, which was right on the edge of Brookline, two blocks from the Brookline line, technically in Alston. Okay. I Very close. Very close to BU where I was working. Sure. Took the trolley there, and I was there in less than ten minutes. I have the probably the vaguest recollection of visiting you in Europe, in you know where you lived, but it's a very, very hazy no. memory. No, I don't remember now. Daddy. Yeah. Let me see the other picture, Judith. Where is the other picture? Thank you. Yep. We go downstairs. I got lots of dog clothes. You might like to look at them. Oh. Yeah, it's trying to do this. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's really good. This is called Halprin's. Uh, ice cream and confectionery. But we used to have, there used to be fruit. I don't see fruit in the window here. It says fruit. Yes, that's right. Cigars and tobacco, fruit and confectionery. This is pretty much the way the store looked when it was purchased. I mean, well, rent, when it was, yes, purchased. It was purchased for us, yeah. How, uh, how comfortable a living were they able to make out of out of the store? Amazing, amazing. Joel will show you where it was all. It was, I would say, conventional, old middle class comfort. Which was, you know, uh, we lived in uh, very decent flat. Some miraculous way, I don't know how. Uh, it was a question of accumulating pennies, you know? And uh, it, uh, it worked in that, from that point of view, you know. We, uh, we, uh, we, we live rather comfortably. Nothing, nothing that you would call luxury of any sort. But what were the, uh, do you remember the addresses at which you lived in East Boston? Yes, yeah. The, uh, the one place that we lived most of the time was 40 Chelsea Street. You passed by. Yeah, we took a visit. I, we tried to visit. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I was amazed at the deterioration because while near us there were 
USA. Working class homes. But our place was not a working class establishment. Uh, there was a doctor next door. This was a double house. And the uh, floor beneath us was a widow of a, of a fire captain. This was not a proletarian uh, housing, you see. A lot of small middle class houses. Now, in terms of the demographics, was it basically mixed, or was it a Jewish pocket in an otherwise Italian well, neighborhood? Well, the Jewish pocket had practically disappeared uh, by the time I was, let's say, uh, just, uh, I got there when I was four years old, and the Jews were already moving out. There were Jews to the north, there was a Jewish section. We lived in what was then already a solidly Italian place. A few blocks away, there was a Jewish enclave, you might say, which gradually uh, became smaller and smaller and smaller during my lifetime. Now, was there a shoal that you belonged to? I guess Bubby and What's Zadie, that? a shoal. Bubby and Zadie weren't very religious, were they? Very. No, I say they weren't, yeah, they were <laughs> They were not at all. Oh, so you didn't, religious instruction was not part of your upbringing? Not sure. Of course not. Give a look, I'm really serious, girls. Thank you. Of course not. I mean, what you have is able to avoid that. <laughs> So were you, you were never, were you bar mitzvah? Were you bar mitzvah? No. Not a bar mitzvah. No, I never was. And I assume the same for my father, too. Naturally. Yeah. Oh, no, ours was a secular household. Jewish, though, from an ethnic and national point of view. Playmates uh, were conventional kids, and uh, they used to go to the synagogue, and I'd, I'd go with them just to you know, run around and so forth. I think I even attended some of the Sunday school classes. Uh, but in my case, it was simply being, being with the kids. Now, did you have uh, any or many Italian friends, or was it really uh, uh, very few Italian friends? Actually, uh, I would say only two Italian friends. One of whom is still alive. I saw him in '88. Uh, he lives outside of Boston, I forget. He one time was a judge. Uh, Tommy Centracchio. I imagine he hasn't died yet because there would be an obituary for the next judge. He also was a disgraced judge for some mafia business, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> So, and I think Teddy would, would, uh, would find the obituary and let me know, because he knew that uh, Tony and I were very good friends. So I saw Tony a couple of times during my stay in Cambridge. Uh, who, were the, uh, who were the clientele? The other one, the other very good friend, who was actually a closer friend, became a doctor, and I lost track of him completely. Now, who are the clientele in Bubby and Zadie's store? Mainly working class people. Yeah. Have you been there? I recall a lot of Irish. Oh, yeah. A lot of Irish. There were a 
Well, so there's an Irish area there too, you know. I, 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 I guess it was much more Irish before the Jews and Italians came in. Uh, we had very few, if any, Jewish clients. And uh, some Italian? And Italian, yeah. Did actually anybody uh, learn how to speak Italian in your household in order to deal with the Italians? No, it wasn't necessary? No, it wasn't necessary. I actually, you know, when I went to Harvard, I studied Italian for two years. And of course, I was still working in the store. I made use of my Italian, except my Italian was the uh, standard language, and these people spoke some dialect, but they understood me and were somewhat amazed, you know, at hearing me speak not only Italian but the genuine. They could recognize that this was the high-class Italian. Of course, they didn't know. A stranger. <laughs> okay, that's it, my friend. That's All right. it. Yeah, I think it's family. And Joe's missed the last couple of seders, I think, and so on. And it just by pure luck happened that Joe's 35th birthday turned out exactly on Miriam's wedding. We'll always share the dates. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh,